Hello friends, welcome back to USMLT. Uh, today's topic, today's uh, topic of discussion is uh, folate deficiency, that is folic acid deficiency. Uh, this is an uh, important topic for uh, USMLE examination. Um, right now, I am covering the topics related to USMLE CK and Step 3. So, I will not be discussing in detail regarding the pathophysiology of this. Because the pathophysiology of this disease or any disease is important for USMLE Step 1. So, in future, we are going to upload more videos uh, on USMLE step 1 ok guys please subscribe to our channel and uh, don't forget to tell your friends about our channel and uh, we have plenty of videos on our channel like we are covering so many topics so just go to our channel and you can see so many videos and you can listen to our videos let me start with this guys the folic, folic, folic deficiency is nothing but the folic acid is lower in the body right it's in below the normal range so this is a very important table what you should know there's a folic acid and that leads to folic acid coenzymes and that causes precursors to purines and the pyrimidines ribotides to rna so this purines and the pyrimidines leads to purines and the pyrimidines deoxyribotides to dna to vitamin b12 coenzymes so remember about this cycle that what we get the summary is the folic acid is very important right and not only folic acid even vitamin b12 so these two things run together work together okay so regarding the pathophysiology in detail i will be uploading a video on step one the causes as usual the causes the folic acid works with the vitamin B12 and vitamin C to help the body break down, use and make new proteins. The vitamins helps form the red blood cells. It also helps produce DNA. The building blocks of the human body which carry, carries genetic information. The folic acid is a type of vitamin B. It is water soluble which means it is not stored in the fat tissue of the body. Water soluble vitamins dissolves in water, leftover amounts of the vitamin leave the body through the urine. Because folate is not stored in the body in large amounts, your blood levels of the folate will get low after only a few weeks of eating a diet low in folate. So look at this, if the patient, if the person is not taking folate rich vegetables or diet then his level of folate can go low easily within a week few weeks uh, you can get folate by eating green leafy vegetables and liver remember very important points okay now the cause is very important for USMLE examination the diseases in which the folic acid is not absorbed well such as celiac disease or Crohn's disease so in USMLE examination what they will do they will give you that the patient is suffering from a Crohn's disease and give you lengthy history and tell you about and ask you about the cause of his anemia. So just remember about folate deficiency also as an option. Okay. But regarding to rule out the uh, from other anemias, you need to do the tests. The lab test will differentiate. Okay. So remember celiac disease or Crohn's disease or any disease that causes absorption of folic acid difficulty drinking too much alcohol eating overcooked food getting too much folic acid during the third trimester of the pregnancy folic acid is given to each and every woman during the pregnancy because the requirement is more during the pregnancy hemolytic anemia medication this is very important such as phenytoin phenytoin is very important drug you should know if the, the in USMLE examination if they give that the patient is on phenytoin and he has an anemia so try to think of folate deficiency also okay the other drugs sulfasalazine and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole poor diet symptoms symptoms are same as of uh, anemia so they have the fatigue okay 
and uh, gray hair, mouth sores, poor growth, swollen tongue. So the other features what you need to look for in a clinical examination is they may have the GI symptoms also. The GI symptoms like in the form of anorexia, nausea, abdominal cramps, especially after taking food. Anorexia is also common, okay, and they may, it may lead to uh, extreme weight loss in these patients. Okay, so the tongue, sore tongue, or a pain upon swallowing can be there. The tongue may appear swollen, beefy, red, shiny, usually around the edges and the tips initially. Angular stomatitis can be seen. So these are the features of folate deficit deficiency the test what you need to do the most important test what you need to do is just to check the levels of folate in our body that is the definitive test but there is one important point what you should know about the folic acid deficiency test let me read this and tell you later the red blood cell folate levels normal range is uh, more than 140 nanogram per ml tend to reflect chronic folate status rather than acute changes in the folate that are reflected in the serum folate levels. Although many confounding factors such as transfused red cells can make this unreliable as a test for folate deficiency states. Folate deficiency can be diagnosed with a blood test. Pregnant women usually have such a blood test during the prenatal checkup. So normal range for a folate in our body is 2.5 to 20 nanogram per ml. And let me call, let me tell you about the another test what we need to look for is serum cobalamin levels. The normal level of serum cobalamin in our body is 200 to 900 pg that is a picogram per ml. As the initial test, ruling out cobalamin deficiency is very important. Why? We need to rule out because if the patient is suffering from the folate deficiency, we need to rule out cobalamin deficiency. Why? Tell me. It's because if there is a folate deficiency and the folate treatment will not improve neurological abnormalities due to cobalamin deficiency. Very important. Very important points. Okay. The serum folate levels cannot be used alone to establish the diagnosis of folate deficiency. Therefore, the serum folate test is usually useful only to rule out folate deficiency in a patient with a serum folate greater than 5. Otherwise, additional follow-up test includes serum homocysteine. That's a normal range. If you want to remember, remember otherwise there will be a lab diagnostic um, table at the right corner of the USM examination and definitely it will help you but try to memorize these uh, levels because that will save your time in your USMLE examination okay uh, which is elevated in vitamin B12 and the folate deficiency and serum methyl malonic acid which is elevated in B12 deficiency only so this is very important point what I'm talking about what happens if there is a patient has a folate deficiency? What are the complications? Anemia, as you know, low levels of white blood cells in the platelets in severe cases. In folate deficiency anemia, the red blood cells are abnormally large. They are megaloblastic, similarly seen what we see in patients with vitamin B12 deficiency. So how do you differentiate whether it's a vitamin B that is a cobalamin deficiency or a folic acid deficiency? That's what I told you before okay check the levels okay go back to the previous slide and read it folic acid is also needed to the for the development of healthy fetus it plays an important part in the development of the fetus spinal cord and the brain you know folic acid deficiency can cause severe birth defects of the brain and the spinal cord known as neural tube defects you know very well preventions how do you prevent it Eat well, that's it. Eat green vegetables and liver. Okay, guys. The Institute of Medicine's Food and the Nutrition Board recommends that adults get 400 microgram of folate daily. 
women who could become pregnant should take folic acid supplements to ensure that they get enough each day. Specific recommendation depends on a person's age, gender and other factors such as pregnancy. Many foods now have extra folic acid added to help prevent birth defects. Hey guys, I'm done with the topic on folic acid deficiency that is folate deficiency. Thank you so much for watching my video and see you in the next video with me on USMLE team.